to join in your house, Lord, and, and to rejoice, sing songs of praise, Lord, and just glorify you. Lord, I ask that you lead God and direct each and every one of us. Allow us to step out of ourselves, Lord, to gain your word and your knowledge into our hearts, Father. Allow us to grow in you. Father, I ask all these things in your heavenly name. Amen. 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 And I'm sure we'd like to have a few people today. <coughs> Ladies. Glad you're up there. Talk your way through it if you have to. We're going to sing out of the new the church hymnal, the new book. We'll start out on page number 92. Just a little talk with Jesus. Too. I, Jesus. Yeah, I'm going to start out with the second one. I, I'm not quite sure of that one yet, so we'll wait. Start out on page number 92. Just a little talk with Jesus. Yeah, I'm going to bypass that first one, Alan. Jesus. 
136. Yes, 
Yeah. We'll just we'll stop there. I'll sing I'll sing a song here in just a few minutes. I'll just call it my tip. Save some face. <laughs> Words of wisdom, you are loved, you are wonderfully made, you are beautiful, you have a purpose, you are a masterpiece, God has a great plan for you. Any announcements? Amen. Now I want to announce that that last song is completely out of our system. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Make that mistake again. <laughs> I was pulling for words from back in the day, and it was just drawing blanks. Yeah. <laughs> Cast into death and destruction. Fire <clears throat> <clears throat> pit. I'd like to remind everybody that uh, there will be a worship and fellowship luncheon on Saturday, October the 12th at New Jerusalem Christian Center. <clears throat> what time does that start? Uh, the luncheon will begin at 1 for ladies only. Right. Ladies only. And then the gentleman, uh, I guess, can attend also at 3.30 is when the, the worship That's the worship service. Okay. 3.30. 3.30. Also, the anniversary service at 3 o'clock. Any other announcements? We, we, get on that, we get on that now, the October 27th. Everybody, we're good, right? Yep. Yeah, because that's what we did. It, it, it worked out good last year. I forgot about doing that. So, yeah, that's a it's good, so. good memory. Of all that stuff. And that worked out good for me, too, because we usually don't have Bible study. And I yeah. think on that, I'll be somewhere in the world somewhere. Hey, is that when you're going to court? Yeah, I have no idea where I'm going. Somewhere in the world. Trust <laughs> Tori. Yeah. But Tori is going to be something fabulous <laughs> and off the hook. You can count on that. Well, good. Okay. The party pooper, don't get to get it. <laughs> Is that by choice that you're not going? He can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> Any other announcements? That'd be a good idea. Everybody hear that? You hear that? At one, the one starts at one. Yeah, that's the women's fellowship in New Jerusalem that day. The men can get together and then meet us at the church at three o'clock when the men are allowed to come to the service. They can go get something. What are you announcing for the men? Um, I'll tell you later. Yeah. <laughs> you get home <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, maybe I try to get hold of The men will get together when the women go to New Jerusalem. The men will probably fix some stuff down there. The men will get together prior to that. Get together with them. We can go down together at 3 o'clock. How's that say? Men don't like y'all. They just come down. You guys can go somewhere to eat like Christian Yeah. Yeah. We'll get together prior to going down there, and then we can There you go. Like go to Frisius. That was a good idea. Another good idea. Go someplace like that, and then. Go have a bromance date. And meet us at the church. A bromance date. Carry on. What kind of a romance? A bro brunch. 
You ever see a car running on rims? That's, the, the wheels fell off of it. <laughs> that's, kind of, that's, that's what just happened. Any other announcements? <laughs> Don't encourage her, maybe. Any other announcements? Any prayer requests? Gonna pray for Robin. Uh, yeah, my 94-year-old neighbor, Polly Ryan, who I've lived next to my whole life, has fallen and broken the ball of her femur and quite a few ribs. She had this, they uh, did surgery, and she transitioned from the hospital to the rehab, but she's not doing so. No, I have not actually. So I'll, I'll reach out to him this afternoon. Um, Kim will be going uh, with the, some ladies from uh, what church that is. She was invited to go. Uh, Jane, Janie Blankenship is the one we've been praying for. Uh, they're going to go on a trip together and um, cruise somewhere down the Caribbean, I guess. But um, pray for uh, pray for Kim. You know, I pray that her health will. Hold up, and God will sustain her body. And you know, I'm. I just ask for the church to because I want her to enjoy her. I want her. To, I want her to be able to enjoy it. So, Amen. Just pray for her. Do you and feel like Alan? Too. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like Alan? I don't complain. I just. <laughs> I'm. A, I'm a big boy. I can take care of myself. <laughs> Any other prayer requests? You know, I would like to pray for that. My goal is endless. I mean, whether it's true, I mean, you know, I don't like to see any child suffer, so pray for her. Any other prayer requests? Bob? Heavenly Father, our Lord and blessed Savior, we bow before you today, Father, we give you all the glory. Thank you for allowing us another day, Father. The, the sun to come up and, and allowing us to get out of bed and read the air that you created and allow us to come into your house and sit underneath your roof, Father, and, and just give you the praise and the glory and the worship. And, Father, it's been a little bit of a funny service here this morning, but we know that the Holy Spirit's in here and he's, he's filling us with, with, with the love and the joy that you bring down upon us. Amen. And, Heavenly Father, it, just, it is so good to get together with with friends and family and loved ones and, and, and all the all you, all your children, Father. It just it just it just warms us from the heart up. Father, we just give you all the praise and the glory. And Father, the, the prayer requests that have been asked for this morning for the for the lost, the lonely, the sick, the afflicted, for the for the ones that that haven't come and been with us here for a few days, Father, just keep them in your hand and watch over them. And let's just hope that everything in their world's going good. And, and Father, just you know the the little cruise that somebody's going to go on and, and, and the athletes, Father, we just we just ask you to keep them in their hands and, 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 and lead and guide and direct them through, Father, and the skills and the abilities that you've given them and, and the ones that, that, are, that are coaching them, Father, that, that you just, you, you shine through and let them know that it's going on. Father, we just, we got plans and needs and and just we're all just pawns in your in your game, Father. This this is your world and your creation. You just lead, guide, and direct us and take us in, in where we need to you need us to go, Father. And as we sing and praise and glory to you, and as, as, as the preacher brings us a word, Father, just, just help it to wrap around us and build us and, and give us all the strength and, and, and what we need to get us through this, this world, Father. We're just we're just pilgrims. We're just 
we're just traveling and walking through. And, oh, Father, you just, you are the Alpha the Omega, Father. You are, you are the Jehovah to anything that we need, Father. You, you know us from the beginning to the end, Father. The hair's on your head. Oh, Father, just thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for loving us, Father. We just owe it all to you. Father, we ask a special blessing over the offering so that if somebody needs it, we can give it. We can keep the lights on in your house, Father, to allow us to come in here and, and be like this on, on a Sunday or a Wednesday. And you're awesome, Father. Thank you for everything. Thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and what he done hanging on that cross and the blood that he shed to cover the sins of this dirty old rag. And in his heavenly name I do pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to try to do this with my glasses on today. I'm going to try to do this music up here too. I'm hoping everybody can hear this. I've had a dollar to my name. I've had friends who walked away. And I've even lost myself a time or two. There were bridges crossed and burned. But through all the wreckage I have learned, there is one thing that I can never lose. If I got Jesus, I've got all that I could ever need. Take the world away from me, and I'll be okay. If I got Jesus, Amen. there's a hope that's living deep inside. A joy that I can never hide. And a safe place to fall, if I got Jesus, I've got it all. Amen. I've seen weakness turn to strength. I've seen failures met with grace. And it's not from what I've done. It's Christ in me. Right. A miracle I can't explain. Oh, he's given me his name. I'm the richest man. That I could ever be If I got Jesus I've got all that I could ever need Take the world away from me And I'll be okay If I got Jesus There's a hope that's living deep inside A joy that I could never hide a safe place to fall If I got Jesus I've got it all Amen. Someday that trumpet's gonna sound And the King of Heaven Will ride upon the clouds Coming down I hit my knees Oh Lord that sings my soul going home if I got Jesus I've got all that I could ever need take this world away from me and I'll be okay if I got Jesus there's a hope that's living deep inside a joy that I can never hide a safe place to fall If I've got Jesus I've got it all If I've got Jesus I've got it all Amen Amen Good job Thank you Jesus
Thank you. Good job. I wasn't really going to say anything, but hearing that, <laughs> hearing that song reminded me of every time we rolled out in Afghanistan, Captain Dennis, our captain, would come down and meet with us. And he would hug us all up together, and he would say a prayer before we headed out. He would say, gentlemen, he said, some of you will fall, but all of you will come back. He said, it doesn't matter how you die or when you die, we all respond to God, but it's how you live. And he said, Jesus is with you right now. Name. Any other testimony? Or song? I'm thankful that um, we have people that can keep our kids safe. This week was a little bit crazy. We were all over the place, but um, God is still good, and he's still taking care of situations and putting people in our lives to help protect our kids and uh, circumstances like that. And I just pray for whatever, whoever was involved in that, that God would really speak to them and they would come to know Jesus because it's a really tough thing. We, I do know that there were some kids that were arrested. I just want to pray for them as well. So just, just pray for that whole situation, but I'm very thankful that our kids are safe. Amen. Anybody else? Good morning. Great day, great day to be in the house of the Lord. Anybody else with a song or testimony today? I got to stand up because I was starting to say it to you. That, that part in that song where it talks about the trumpet chokes me every single time, and I've tried so many times to get around that I can't do it. I'm ready. Praise God, I'm ready. Amen. 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 It's a great feeling to think about the return of Christ and be excited and don't have fear. Amen. 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 I got Jesus, baby. That's, that's what I'm saying, man. You know, um, I, I remember growing up and knowing, hearing about the return of Christ and this and that, and, you know, until Holy Spirit settled in my mind that you're all right. That was, it was kind of like, okay, I know that's a good thing, but I'm kind of afraid. I'm no longer afraid. I'm looking for his return. I'm excited for his return. And I'm glad today that we can have that assurance in Christ, that we can know that we're ready to go when he calls and when he returns. Anybody else with a song or testimony? Anybody else at all? Clear. Good. Good. Amen. I know we checked on her earlier and she said they hadn't given her the re results yet, so I'm glad that she finally found out. Amen. And God spared her, spared her and took care of her. All right, turn your Bibles to the book of John, chapter 7. 
John in chapter 7. John chapter 7. I want to ask a question, question, question this morning. A rhetorical question, or however you want to say, you don't have to answer, in other words. What really satisfies? What really satisfies? I, I would imagine if we put that question out to the world, or out just in general public, we'd get 10,000 different answers. And there's only one true answer. Here in the book of John, chapter 7, start reading at verse 33. The Bible says that the Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, speaking of Christ. And the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then, Je then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while I am with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go? Or where is he going to go that we can't find him? We go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles. What manner of saying is that he said, Ye shall seek me and shall not find me? And where I am, thither ye cannot come. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake he of the Spirit, which they have, that they believe on him, should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. What really satisfies? Webster's Dictionary describes the word satisfaction as this. Gratification of desire, contentment, payment, or compensation. And yet in Psalm chapter, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 20 says, Hell and death, hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. You know, I'm truly amazed that we live in a world that we do today that, let's just face it, how unsatisfied this world is. And I'm speaking in just general terms. The world is not satisfied with anything. I made a comment to somebody this week about a different subject. I said, I said my dad always used to say, people complain if you hung them with a new rope. You ever heard that saying before? Not that a good hanging is either good either way, but, you know, at least you use a new rope on them. I, I don't know where he got that at, but I really have that's My dad, I don't think I want to ever heard him say that, but maybe he didn't come up with it, but he heard it somewhere, I'm sure. But, but uh, people are just not satisfied in the world today. And yet the one thing, the one thing that can cure everything, can satisfy every single person in the world, is literally one breath away from you. It's almost like a man leaning on a water fountain and dying of thirst. Or somebody that's starving to death living above a grocery store. It's literally that simple and that, that, that logic is exactly what it is. With the world not being satisfied, and yet Christ is there. Jesus is always available. So many, so, so many people in life have 
put their ladders of life against the building the, which they think is going to satisfy them and they climb each rung and they'll fight and tooth the tooth and nail to get to the top and just to get to the top and realize that they're on the wrong building. That's how life is. Because no matter where they turn, no matter what they do, no matter how many accomplishments that they think they have achieved in this life, when they get to that pinnacle, they're still not satisfied. There's still something missing. I'm glad that Jesus saved my soul, and not only saved my soul, but satisfied the very depth of my soul. There's nothing else that I'm looking for in life. It doesn't mean that I don't have aspirations. It don't mean that I, that I just lay down and quit doing things. It means that you know, no matter what happens to me in this life, I'm satisfied with where I am because I'm satisfied with Christ. Jesus even said in Matthew verse 11, chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, come unto me. Verses we know very well. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden. And he said, I will give you rest. That word rest means to be satis satisfaction. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, on me, and take my yoke upon you and learn of me. We all know this verse. We all know these two verses as well as we know anything else. And yet, do we apply it to our lives? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly at heart. You shall find rest. You shall find satisfaction for your souls. Why? Because my burden is easy. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Book of Revelation chapter 22 verse 17, 17 says, And the spirit and the bride say, Come. The spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that hath thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the wet water of life freely. What really satisfies in this life, if we were to ask the world, they would give you so many different answers, and yet their answer is only one. And that's the blood of Jesus Christ. True satisfaction for the soul only comes from Jesus Christ. We know that. We believe that. We say we believe that. And we do our best to live like we believe that. And yet sometimes I look around and the very ones that believe that, the very ones that, are, that have accepted the blood of Christ as their, as their personal Savior are the ones that, sit, that don't, look, don't seem to be satisfied. We look around and we, we look at our aspirations, we look at the things we want to do, and yet at the end of the day we lay down in bed and we wonder, why? Why is this emptiness in me? Why can I trust that I have all I need in Christ? Folks, listen. When we settle in our minds that Jesus is the one true satisfaction, the failures, the lies, the things that come upon our life, that those fiery darts that Robin spoke of in, in Sunday school, when they come upon us, they may hurt, they may sting. But when we are truly satisfied with Christ, we can lay our heads on our pillows at night and say, God, you have the day, you have the night, and you have tomorrow. And whatever comes my way, I'm satisfied. I read a story of a farmer one time that had a, had a couple years of not so good crops and he got so fed up, so aggravated that he said, I'm just going to sell it all. So he called a realtor and the realtor said, sure, I'll, I'll take it on for you. And 
write down a description of what you have there and I'll put it on and put it in the paper. We'll, 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 we'll take care of it for you. So the farmer sat down that night and he began to talk about his land and how good of soil it is. And there's a, there's a, a, a creek that runs close to it that you don't have to run the water lines out there. You have all the irrigation you need and uh, the sun comes up in the right place in the morning and just sets down in the right place. It's, it's such a beautiful land and you, it, it's, it's everything that a person is asking for. And at the end of the, he wrote that down and started to submit it to the, per, to the realtor and he thought, you know what, wait a minute. I've been looking for this land all my life. Folks, listen, we have everything. Everything that we need in life, we have. There's nothing. Nothing this world has that will give us more satisfaction than Jesus Christ. So when I ask the question, what truly and what really satisfies, it is absolutely and positively the blood of Jesus Christ. So that's the general topic, that's the general idea, but what does it satisfy? I said everything, it does. But when we break that down, what specifically does the blood of Christ satisfy? Well, first off, it satisfies our needs. The psalmist David wrote these words, I've been young and now, I've been, and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. David is saying right there in the scriptures, you know what? I've been young, God took care of me. I've been, now that I'm old, God's taking care of me. And you know what? I've never really needed anything. I can look back at my life and I can see there, there were times that from a human standpoint and from a, a man looking at his life, I think, you know what? There, I had several needs in my life that, that just didn't seem to be met by what I thought they should be met by. There's been times that I didn't have a place to lay my head. There's been, there's been a time in my life that my, 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 the home that I built was taken away from me. And I, I was sitting and I thought, God, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? But you know what? God sent me to a little home that I had known all my life. The house I live in now, actually, that my grandma was living in. And she said, you've got a home. You see, in my mind, it was, in my mind, it was, it was the worst, serious, it was seriously, it was the worst place to be in a person's life. But God said, you, I didn't leave you out there. I give you a place to stay. I give you a place to call home. There have been times in all of our lives that we can look and say, you know what, this didn't exactly turn out the way I wanted it to turn out. But when we look back at the situation, God never left us, left us without what we needed. Amen. Every single time God has taken care of me. When I accepted the blood of Jesus Christ in my life, I find now and I will find in the future that my needs have been met. We may think that our needs in this world are great. But what we consider to be our greatest needs are, very, very, are, are nothing to God. Well, what are some things that we rank up there as being important? Need that our families have. I, I wrote, wrote a couple down. Our jobs. It's pretty important. We ever, I think, every, at least every single person here, especially in the area that we live, have woke up one day and be like, you know what? I don't have this job going to turn out. I'm just, I, I don't may not have a job tomorrow. Well, it's pretty important. From a man's standpoint, that has a family, a job is. Pretty, it ranks, ranks, ranks up there quite a bit. Because if I don't have a job, the next thing that, that I thought was pretty important was our payments, our, our bills. That's pretty important. If you don't have that job, 
you don't have the bill. You can't pay the bill that you say that you that you, that, you, that you've acquired or that you've accumulated in your life. Another thing I thought was pretty important was our health. Our health is ranks up there. Nobody wants to wake up feeling sick all the time and going out through life with, with problems in our life and things not, just not being what we want them to be. Does that mean that God don't, doesn't care about those things if we find ourselves out in the cold a little bit? It doesn't mean that God has forsaken us. David that wrote that song, I've been young, now I'm old, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his big seed baking bread. We look at David's life and we know for a fact there were times that he didn't have a place to lay his head. There the enemy was chasing him. The enemy would have snuffed him out if he even got the visible sight of David. Time and time and time again. It wasn't that David lived a rich and, and prosperous life and he had everything that he ever needed. There were times that David said, you know what, I'm in bad shape here. And for David to write that song, I'm young, and now, I've been young, and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed baking bread. He said, what he was saying is, God has never left me with nothing. We may not be eating T-bone steaks every night. But you know what, that deer, that, that, full, that, field, that, that hill out there is full of deer. That God put there. You with me? You picking up what I'm laying down? You may not have the filet mignon on your, on your plate. But I promise you that God, if he just gives you a hamburger, he's feeding you what you need to sustain life. No need that we have will ever not be met by God. And it took me a lot of years to figure that one out. Because I kept thinking in my mind, I want this, I want that. It's got to be this, it's got to be that. And God says, you know what? I will put you in a spot where you got to trust me. Have you ever been put in the spot where you put in the spot that you really had no clue what was going to happen? Let's go through those three things: your job, your bills, and your health. I'd say, I, I'm going out on a limb here, but I'd say everyone sitting here has at least had more trouble with one of those three or all three that you thought, I don't know what's going to happen. You're sitting here today. Whatever that was. You know what I like? A term that we use right here that, that we've used several times is the stretching of our faith. I look back and by God, that's exactly what God was doing in my life. Yeah, you trust me. I appreciate you trust me. The blood of Christ has applied to your life. And I'm glad that you do that. But you know what? I need to be, move you up a little bit. So I'm going to put a trial in your life, whether it be my job, my mortgage, or my health. And it's going to say, you know what? I'm going to make you sweat for just a minute. Because I want you to trust in me fully. You know, the problem we have as God's people many times is we try to rely on me. We, if we can't handle it, handle it ourselves, then, we, then, then, then we, we just don't want it. Sometimes that God says, you know what, I'm going to put you on your face to where you have nothing, no, well, no, no body, nothing else, not even yourself that you can trust except me. Once you've been there and you come out on the other side and you can speak with David, who I've been young and now I'm old, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread, you can say amen. I know exactly what David's talking about. You see, the blood of Christ satisfies our needs. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 4 that Jesus must needs go through Samaria. We all know the story. We may, he must need go through Samaria. His disciples didn't understand. They said, you know what? There's a quicker way to get where we're going. Why do we got to go through that wretched old town of Samaria? Why do we got to go through that way? Because that way is nothing but, but let's just face it, Jesus. There are people there we don't want to associate with. There's people there that we don't want to be associated with. There's people there that we don't want to talk to. There's people there that we really don't even like that well. You see, these were the Jews 
This is the Jews, the Jewish nature coming out of them because they were people in Samaria that from all walks of life. They were the castaways, if you will. They were the ones that, yeah, you really don't want to go through there. If you go through that place, make sure you lock your doors. If you got a flat tire, run on the rim till you get to, till you get past it. Don't stop at the stop signs. That's Samaria. That was where he said, he said, I've got to go through Samaria. They said, are you sure you've got to go through Samaria? You know why he had to go through this? We all know why he had to go through Samaria. Because there was a young woman there that needed Jesus. He was sitting at the well that Jacob had dug. And she come to him and she come there at noonday. And he said, he says, I want, I want a drink. She said, what are you speaking to me for, Jew? Why did you come my way? Why are you talking to me? This is paraphrasing. He said, what are you doing at noon? Don't the women usually come in the morning to get the water? You see, not only was Samaria the bad place, she was the one of the worst of Samaria. She said, those women won't associate with me because of my nature, because of who I am. And you asking me, you don't even have anything to draw with. And you're asking me to give you something to drink? In that chapter, Jesus realized that this lady, I'll call her a lady, probably in that day, she wouldn't have been not, she would not have been called a lady. But I will give her that the I will give her that and call her. This lady needed something that she didn't even know that she needed. And Jesus said unto her in verse 10 of chapter 4, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith it to thee, give me a drink, thou would have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. If you really know who you are speaking to, you would ask me for what I'm able to give you. And she says, oh, sure, I'll take it. Then Jesus brings up what nobody wanted to talk about. Ain't you, ain't you, glad, I, I know what the one thing I love about God. He sweeps out every corner in your life. Things you think you got hid. He said, well, Fantastic. Go get your husband. Come on, well, I'll give you. Oh, I don't have a husband. She said. She said, "You're right. You've had five. And by the way, the one you're living with now is not your husband." <laughs> Are you kidding me? Why would the, Why would Jesus of Nazareth? Why the would the Messiah of all the world want to associate with this woman? Because she had a need. Aren't you glad today there's nothing so horrible that this world may look at you, the world may look at it and say, you know what, you're not worth anything. But Jesus said, you're worth everything to me. She said, I perceive that thou art a prophet. You think? How else would he know these things? I mean, Jesus said unto her finally, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall win either in this mountain, nor yet in Jerusalem, worship the Father. Ye worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation as other Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. It says God is a, was the last, one of the last things he says to her. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see what he's saying there? there listen, listen, lady, there's nothing in this world, there's nothing that you will ever come, there's nowhere you will ever go that will, will satisfy anything that you, you, you've done everything that you could to make yourself happy. And yet you find yourself here at noon taking water from a well because you're not, that's the only time that you're allowed to do it. So let's take a look. Let's take an evaluation of your life. 
Are you happy with where you're at? Obviously she wasn't. Obviously she was not satisfied with where she was. But Jesus Christ said, look, I'll give you water where you'll never, you'll never thirst again. And the need that you think you have will be met 100%. So from that day on, she knew and she realized who she met at the well that day was just not some kind of false prophet. Wasn't just some yahoo that decided to start talking to her. This truly was the Son of God. So, well, how do you know she felt all that? Because she said, the Bible says that she ran off and she said, tell her about, come, see a man that told me all the things that I did in my life, and guess what? He still wanted me. Folks, listen, we have our lives. We have what we have done. We can't change the things that we've done in our life, but thank God in heaven. We've got one that don't care. The world wants to remind us. The world wants to give us. Say, you know what? Look what you've done. God says, I don't care what you've done. The blood of my son satisfies all that. Amen. There's not a need you need in your life. You just need me. I'm glad that the need of my life was met with Jesus Christ. Because I can look at the people around me. I can look at some that I may, may call me friend. And that I may call friend. Me fr I may call them friend. And they'll be very quick to remind me of what I've done and who I've been. At the very moment, I may get down and say, you know what? I may hang my head and say, yeah, you're right. I'm a horrible person. And walk away where I can say no. I've been covered by the blood. See, you know what? I don't need you. Because I got everything I needed in Christ. The blood of Christ satisfies our need. Secondly, the blood of Christ satisfies our souls. To have our needs made is one thing, but to have our souls being satisfied is something totally different. The book of Psalm, chapter 63, and verse 1 says, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in the dry, thirsty land. Where no water is to see thy power and thy glory so as i have seen thee in the sanctuary because thy loving kindness is better than life my lips shall praise thee thus will i bless the while I bless thee while i live i will lift up my hands in thy name listen to this my soul my soul shall be satisfied as with the morrow and fatness my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wing will I rejoice. You know, there's a story that was told that, true or not true, I don't know, but it's a wonderful story. There was a big brush fire on this farmer's land and he went out to see the damage after he, after after everything had been put out and he walked upon this clump of feathers that would have been singed and burnt and it was a chicken completely looked like it just went through the fire furnace it was singed dead he walked up to it and he kind of just nudged it with his foot and out from underneath it came a bunch of little chicks. You see, what had happened was, during the fire, the little chicken, the little mom chicken took her wing and she put it around her chickens. She took the heat. So when the psalmist says here, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. Those that dwell in the secret place of the Almighty shall abide under the wing, under the shadow of the Almighty. You see what happens in our life? Not only does He meet our needs, but everything in our life, He just takes us and He shields us. Nothing in this life, those fiery darts that Satan puts on us, guess what? They only get through Christ before they get to us. So if they're hitting us, God's got a reason. 
Maybe it's to stretch our faith. I promise you with everything in me that Jesus Christ protects us in this life. There's nothing comes my way that Jesus don't know about. When the psalmist writes these words, is it my soul shall be satisfied as with the marrow and fatness with my mouth, I will praise thee with joyful lips. You know what? The souls of the world that we live, that we come in contact with, maybe if some of us sitting here today, desires not to just have our needs met, but to have that joy in our life. Not happiness. Happiness is moment. Happiness is fleeting. Joy is a way of life. And the soul of man I look around the world and I see people hurting. I see people that I care about hurting their, in their lives. And I think to myself, I've, I've been in that spot. I know, I know what they're going through. And what, what I see is their, their soul is just aching because of whatever. If we, again, we can name 10,000 of those things too that what hurts our soul. But we live in a world today that people around us are hurt. The world, folks, listen, the world is hurting. The world is suffering today. You see, Satan's dredge upon this world is shown in everyday living. As we watch the TV, as we read the papers, as we look at the internet, as we walk the streets, as we look at those around us, we see a world around us that is hurting. Their very souls are aching within them. And they're looking for something. They're looking for something that they have not yet found or or they've heard of, or just they don't, they're not sure. All they know is something has got to change. Something has got to take place because I heard him from within. Again, it's not that we don't suffer as God's people. It's not that we don't see things. It's not that we don't cause suffering sometimes. But you know what? It comes right down to where the, where, the, where the rubber meets the road is we can recognize that Satan's scourge on this world is not over. You see, Satan's got a little bit of time left. And if you think he's going to go easy, you're not reading the same word I'm reading. He has put his scourge on this world from the time that he was in the Garden of Eden until he's chained and thrown into the lake of fire. I promise you, he is not going to stop. And the world around us, those we care about, those that we love, they're hurting. The very depths of their souls are aching. And he says in verse 3 of this psalm, Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. I'm glad today went to, I'm glad that the, the, the service has gone the way it's gone because I woke up this morning and, and I, I told Robin, I've been, I've been full all morning. And the Spirit gave me a song that, that I, I, can't, I can't sing it. It's, it's kind of a rap song. If it's, if it's a cool song. Lil' Ant probably sing it for me. I played it for her when I was waking her up. It's going to be a good day. By Forrest Frank, I think's his name. It's going to be a good day, no matter what they say. <clears throat> Sun is shining down on me. Birds are singing praise. And it goes into rap. I can't do that. But, but I thought, you know what? I, I, that, that song has been on my mind all day because I thought, you know what? It is a good day. Every day on this side of the grave, whether Jesus Christ, my soul is satisfied. There's nothing that I want. There's nothing that I need. And I can lay my head on my pillow at night and drift off to sleep knowing that my God in heaven is satisfied the very depths of my soul. And 
I will praise thee as the psalmist said, I will praise thee with my lips. Praising him with our lips is sometimes our living also, not just our words, but our living. Sometimes I go to work with such a bad attitude that I wouldn't want to be around me. But lately, the Holy Spirit's been reminding me, you know what? Straighten up. Straighten up. You know better. You of all people know better. So go in there with a better attitude. Don't go into the story that I told on Wednesday night about sitting at Lily Ann's game and Kim said, you look like I got a look on your face like you're going to kill somebody because I did. That's how I felt. It was so... Ugh. And I walked out to my truck just so I could get away because I, she, she, I'm glad she reminded me of that because I thought, you know, I don't need to be here. I need to go out where I can be by myself and pray. And that's exactly what I did. I said, God, you've got to get this off of me. You see, whatever happens today really don't matter. Whatever phone call i got to make, just make them and get on. Whatever text i got to put out, just do it. You know what, God? You're still, you're still, you're still sitting on the throne. We're not doing it alone. And we're not doing it alone. I was reminded very quickly. But you know what? It's going to be a good day. Because the depths of my soul have been satisfied by the blood of Jesus Christ. And finally, the most important part of what the blood of Christ satisfies. Listen to this. It satisfies God. The blood of Jesus Christ. I know, right? Oh, yeah. I, I, you know, I've heard, we've heard that a thousand times. But you think about it for a moment. I know this is nothing new. But it's a reminder that, you know what? It may, he may satisfy our need. He may satisfy our soul. But those things don't do any good if our sins are still upon us. The blood of Jesus Christ satisfies God. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 19 says this. For it pleased the Father that in Him, speaking of Christ, should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of His cross by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself by Him, I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you... Us, the readers, the people of the world that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your own mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through, through death to present you holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. No matter how wretched we are, no matter what bad thoughts I have, no matter what these wicked things these hands do, I stand in the, in the presence of God, unblameable and righteous because of Jesus Christ. It satisfied God, the Father in heaven, to watch His Son, His only Son, die on an old broken cross. You tell that to the world and they think you're crazy. You know why? Because somebody touches my son. One of my sons, I promise you, if they touch one of my sons and my daughter, they're going to get the reckoning of what I can give them. They're going to get the full first force of my wrath. You know why? Because I don't feel that they're worthy of my children's life. You know what upsets me and probably upsets God more than it does me? To those that hear of what Christ did and still refuse to accept the blood of Christ for the payment of their sins. Because what they're saying is, you know what? Hey, I'm better. I, need, I, don't, I don't need that. I got me. I've got my good works. I've got the things that I do. I got, I got, I got my name on a church membership. I got what I need because of what I've done. I've not done anything, one thing in my life to merit God saying, hey, good job. And I'm not looking for that. You know why? Because once I trusted the blood of Jesus Christ, I realized at that point, there's nothing I can do. What am I going to do to achieve better than that? And yet the world looks squarely in the face of God every single day and says, you know what? I got me, I don't need your son. Oh, 
Well, they really don't mean it because they don't know. They do know because the Holy Spirit has told them. There will be people in hell when this world is over that know fully, full well why they are there, that they got there because they chose to go there. I watched something the other day that somebody, a, a street preacher basically, he didn't, he didn't come out and say it meanly, but that's what he told him. You're, if you go to hell, you go there because you asked to go there. Of course, they just lit him up, you know, blah, 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 blah. He's like, look, and he read the scriptures. No, look, it's not my words. What you, the blood of Christ took care of you. If you don't trust that, then you're choosing to go to hell. It's pretty simple. The equation is not algebra here. It's simple math. Jesus Christ equals heaven. No Jesus Christ equals hell. The blood of Christ makes the difference. It said he, those of us that were alienated has he brought together, has he reconciled back to his father. Greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. Christ, one of my favorite words in the Bible, and I'm quoting, one of my favorite words in the Bible is the word propitiation. That just sounds cool. Propitiation. But that's payment. The Bible calls Jesus Christ our propitiation for our sins, our payment for our sins. But Satan loves to come and say, you know what, but God, he's not talking about that. That's just too far. You cross the line on that one, the blood of Christ is not good enough for that. There is nothing that you and I, you know, any kind of wickedness this world dreams up has been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. When Satan comes to you, you say, yeah, but look what you did. So you're right, big boy, I sure did that. Thank God for the blood of Christ. That no longer is hanging on me anymore. I'm not one to say we're, ha we're happy about our past because some of the things in our past that we laugh about, we joke about, probably shouldn't laugh or joke about. But you know what? Why we can laugh and joke about them? Because they're covered. And they ain't hanging on me no more. Some of the wicked things that's ran through this mind in the 52 years of living, the most 53 years of living, I wouldn't want to discuss with anybody because it's all been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because his blood satisfied my Father in heaven. Because of that, my needs are met, my soul satisfied, and I can say it's going to be a good day, no matter what they say. The sun is shining down on me, their birds are singing praise. It's going to be a good day. God's given us a beautiful day today. He did. It's just a beautiful day outside. The weather's starting to change to hot, but it's warm. It's not hot. It's warm. I'm not going to complain because I know cold days are coming, so I'm not going to complain a whole lot. I'm going to miss these hot days. But you know what? It's a beautiful day. And if it was snowing, if it was storming, if it was the worst weather in the world, I could still say it's, it's going to be a good day. Because my soul has been satisfied and the needs of my life are met. There's nothing my family needs. And if it was something I, that we need, I've got faith in God, he'll meet it. It may not be what we want, but I promise you my needs will be met. So what really satisfies? Was the original question that I asked. What really, truly satisfies? Those 10,000 answers that I said the world could give you, they'll still give them to you. But the answer is only one. True satisfaction comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. And whatever else happens in life, it happens. But I've said it before, I'll say it again. The worst thing that we have to go through down, on, down here on earth is the worst thing we'll ever have to go through. It's nothing but heaven after this. It's nothing but in the presence of God Almighty, or Jesus Christ and God, it, it's just going to, everything that we think that we understand, it's all going to work out. Whatever bad day we have here, the worst it's got to be, it's going to be. But those that are lost, 
those that haven't been satisfied by the blood of Jesus Christ, the best day they have here is the best day they'll ever have. And they haven't seen battle yet. But hell is coming. But it can't be avoided by the blood of Christ. Let's bow our hands. Father in heaven, we come to you in closing today. Father, we thank you so much that even what the world will call a bad day, we can say it's going to be a good day. Everything that happens in life is known by you. And the one thing that truly satisfies was made possible. The propitiation for our sins is Jesus Christ. He is what makes the difference between us and those that have not accepted his blood. We praise you and we thank you, God, for watching over us. Father, we thank you for our church that we can come together and we can laugh and we can have a good time. But at the end of the day, we love you more than anything else. And we want you to continue to be the head of our church. We invite you, God, to 100% take over our worship services, our building, our lives, so that every day, no matter what happens, we see you know it's going to be a good day because I give everything to God. And he's welcome to do to my life whatever he chooses because he's never done anything bad. You work all things out for the good. And we believe that and we know that. And we ask these things through Christ's name. And amen. amen. All right, let's all stand this morning. Any other announcements? Anything you need to bring up? Bible study Wednesday night. Let him go and let him God. Let go and let God. That's it. It's going to be a good one. It's already been good. Mm -hmm. The introduction was phenomenal. So, um, I tell you, it's, it's very pertinent for this time of, our, of, of the world today letting go and letting God because <clears throat> we can't do it ourselves. I think we proved that. I think the Lord proved that we're, we're kind of idiots. So we just better let God handle it. Amen? Amen. All right. Nothing else? That starts at 630? Come on, be with us. All right. Nothing else? All right. Let's bow our heads. Sister Robin, would you dismiss us, please? Father God, we thank you this morning for your glorious word. Spirit of the living God, did you come and show up and show out? Now, Father, we ask that you continue with the blessing over each and every family that's represented here this morning. Bless us in baskets and storehouse that we go out and we come in under your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray and let the church say. Amen. 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 Amen.